When I first sat down with Rob, I was in a desperate situation, as so many people that come to MEND are. I'm not the only one in the world that wakes up in the morning and the first sort of thought is, what's the least painful way to get out of bed? <laughs> it's taken me six years to get this base bit of knowledge that I have, but it was enough to get us going. If this is really important to you, focus on your health. The hell with your money, the hell with the bucket list, the hell with what you've been told, because without your health, even your faith will get shaken. And I have seen it through the years, honestly. I'm just trying to warn you as a good guide. We don't wait. We're taking action. People are dying. We can't wait anymore. Meaford, Ontario is a small farming community a couple hours north of Toronto. We're on the shores of Georgian Bay. It's a typical small town with lots of apple orchards, uh, dairy and, and beef farms. We have a very unique canvas to paint on here. Meaford has one of the oldest demographics per capita in Canada. And it was about 13 years ago. All of our doctors were investigated for opiate use. They thought we had one of the best bike gangs up here pumping dope all over the area. They were also very separated in their thinking around here because this is one of the most conservative areas I have ever seen. We got 17 churches. Right? They can't even agree on that around here. But what they could agree on, right, that when their health waned, right, they needed some help. It's so wonderful to be able to be part of a big project. Patients helping patients, that's what it's all about. I was a heavy cigarette smoker 40 years plus and that's hurt me. I had the beginning of COPD. I'm a survivor. I made it. A lot of my friends didn't. And now I'm able to share it with everybody the wondrous plant cannabis. Look at it. It saved my life and it'll save yours. I just got to share it with everybody. They don't want us to show them that this cannabis oil works like that because that would put a lot of people out of business. Everyone's heard about Gary. <laughs> Until you walk naked amongst the ladies you haven't lived. <laughs> I get excited, I can't help it. He's a little rough around the edges, but uh, if you want someone to have your back, he'll have your back. I call myself an actionist. I educate people. I've been in court, I've told the judge, all the white fat cats that are joining on board, that's all fine and dandy. You want to control the industry, you control it. You're not controlling me. I will look after myself, I will look after our people, patients, whoever comes near me, can I help? So we are an outreach and, and a community group. And we're here for social change, and this is a huge social change. We're not dealers, we're healers, and we're not preachers, we're teachers. So you may have a different perspective, and that's great. Keep your perspective. This might just help you expand it. It makes me shrug my shoulders very tightly when I hear some poor soul come to me saying, the doctor tells me I've got two months to live, but hasn't given them any assistance to live that two months, if it is two months, in a great way. So if I can help you live out your last two months comfortably, then that's a bonus. And that's we have done that too, where people have come to us not a whole lot we can do to, to reverse what's, but we can certainly help what's gonna come next. Unfortunately, as soon as we're born, we're dying, right? But if you don't help that population, it doesn't make sense to help the other population because they sort of go hand in hand. The whole idea is a longevity. So if you can start here and you can keep yourself going and you can just take this one magnificent plant Everybody wins. 
My name is Dr. Ira Price. I'm a Royal College trained emergency physician with a fellowship in sports medicine. I happen to also be a coroner in the province of Ontario and over the last decade I've been working with medical cannabis. I really started working with medical cannabis back in 2010 and it came as a as sort of a passion out of the emergency department where I was frustrated with seeing patients coming into the emergency room looking for narcotics or in acute withdrawal or just flat out dying from overdose. When I started working with cannabis, not many people were happy about what I was doing. I had issues from my peers. How are you embracing stoner culture? And I'm like, it's not about stoner culture. It's about shifting that paradigm from moving away from the idea of stoner culture into the medicinal and healing properties for which cannabis has been used for, for thousands of years. Cannabis is far more than just a medicine that you take or you apply or a tincture or a pill. Cannabis is a community that helps people feel like they belong to something and can help them lead a happier life because of that and not feel isolation. That's why MEND is so important uh, at the end of the day because it creates community and that comes through cannabis. Everybody is part of what goes on here. They all want to be part of the healing. They all want to be helpful. And the benefit has been unbelievable. My next class is at a Rotary Club. It used to be just Gary and I out there doing a one-on-one -on -one cooking class, and now look at the ripple. And it's gone coast to coast. We went out west. Rob's been out east making tinctures and teaching people. Rob and I traveled many miles together. I told him I didn't want to do it anymore because my idea of traveling isn't sleeping in the back of a pickup truck with the roof right above us and Grizzly Adams snoring beside me. But anyways, you do what you got to do. It's not about the party high anymore. It's about truly being helpful. Right? And for no other reason than we can. That's it. I share the knowledge. You need it. Today, the gift is yours. It's as simple as that. And whoever needs this, it'll be sitting waiting for them when the time comes in the door. And they'll leave with hope and health and happiness again. Seems a fair trait. For a little bit of work in the garden, yeah, I'd do that anytime. I'd just like to have a bigger garden. <laughs> I'd met Rob May doing a story about a swing that he'd built, the, the world's biggest swing. People even asked me about the swing. Why'd you do that? Do you go for a Guinness World Record? No, we did it to raise funds for our local playground. Around here, if you have a problem, rural thinking is solve it. And we got talking about this, this tincture and butters and, and cannabis and, and how it can work to help with pain. It turned into a medicine that, that allowed me to function and do, do my work and to live and to spend time with my kids and to not be constantly worried about all these chemicals that I was putting into to me to, to deal with the same issues. I'm not wearing tie-dyed shirts and sitting in the basement playing video games and with, you know, hauling on a bong. I'm putting out a newspaper every week. I'm going to council meetings. I'm interviewing people. I'm writing. That's been my role is to inform my readers to try and normalize cannabis as as a not just as a medicine but just as a as a sub as a plant the acceptance of mend in the community was helped along quite a bit by rob not being threatening he would volunteer at the schools um, with the breakfast program he brings positivity to the community and so when people don't feel threatened they can be more open-minded to things and i think that's a big part of men's success it's very easy to feel like some sort of a failure because you're going through a medical situation that's beyond your control but you can still feel like a failure and i got talking to rob about um about that pain and he, he had some very severe back issues as well. I broke my back in three different places. It was just basically three ruptured discs to begin with. I misdiagnosed, I walked for about five weeks. I ground the sciatic nerve until it was scarred. They said, sorry, scarred nerve tissue, you're screwed, end of story. They gave me my tag and said, here, you're tagged and released, you're a cripple, you're disabled. And the last doctor that I talked to basically said, look, best case scenario, you're in a wheelchair in three years. Right. I spent three years suffering, right, predominantly, calling on my hands and knees to go to physiotherapy and the rest of getting in a cab, right? And then just to be sure that I was doing it, I suffered for another five years, and then Gary showed up. It's all Rob's fault, though. If it wasn't for Rob May, I don't know. This would never have taken off because he's so well-liked and loved in the community. I'm well-liked and loved, too, but 
I'm kind of the loose cannon. I tell everyone Rob will provide the education and I will provide the entertainment. Hey, hey listen, I've walked the walk <laughs> and I've talked the talk. The reason I am as healthy as I am is because of my high voluminous usage of cannabis. It's my medicine. And I expect wherever I go, if they don't have a spot set up for me, I'll find my own corner because that's what I do. It keeps me level-headed. This is the best, as far as I'm concerned, way for me to apply my medication. I don't use drugs. I don't use alcohol. I don't smoke cigarettes. I guess I'm a quitter. <laughs> I'm 63 years old. I tell everyone I'm 19 with 43 years experience. I don't care if you want to call me a pothead, an old stoner. I'm all of those things. And now I'm a caregiver. And now I educate people. And it isn't just me, it's the team of people. It's a whole bunch of people. Here we are, the big swing. I love this man. This man and his wife, they put up with me, and I'll tell you, sometimes I've come in here just up bouncing. Now, this was the same event. I can look out here right now and see Gary Pallister climbing out of his vehicle, and it was on a Thursday morning. To see him show up at 7 o'clock in the morning when I know he's been partying until 3, I was like, uh-oh, <laughs> right? I mean, if he's here, there's a problem. <laughs> and he comes bolting in, and he says, brother, I know you suffer, right? He says, I got this. It's supposed to help with pain. And he says, here, try some. And I said, what the hell is it? And he goes, a uh, uh, tin something or other. He said, I don't know. He said, it's made from weed. It's fine. All right. I'm like, ah, hell, at this point in time, brother, I'll try anything. <laughs> and Gary's gone again. He's gone. Right. Nothing else. Didn't want anything other than a hug and to try and help me out. Hopefully this works. Thanks very much. I'm gone. I went out to the shop and just started puttering away. And it's been five hours of literally pain-free. I mean, I got right on the phone. Holy, jumped up, Jesus. Gary, what the hell did you give me? I need more. Wow, I love cannabis because of that. Uh, you get some, some guy shows up to your house and says, here, try this, bro, it can't hurt. And you're like, yeah, sure. And the next moment you're smiling and you don't have pain. Gary goes, oh my God, it's a bee, I'm gonna get stung. I put my hand out, the bee landed on my hand. You're in heavens. <laughs> it's like a whole new rob. So when I had come back, then, yeah. You had already done a bunch of research and already made up two batches. Right, so I started contacting authors and anybody that would talk to me and, you know, a few of them just, you know, right away hung up as soon as I said cannabis, but a couple of them were really wide open about it. And I said, now look, I've studied for three years all the other herbal remedies and I've tried everything. I didn't care if it was dragon's fruit from East India. If it worked, I'll get it. Little did I know cannabis was going to be the thing that really helped the most. Got a couple of um, little cannabis plants here. They got broken off during the last little storm. So lady brought them over and asked me if there was something we could do with them. And I said, well, of course we can. We'll just let them dry and strip them down. And uh, that's what we do. We just kind of peel them right off. And all those little tiny ones are immature ones. They all just go in a box. And this is what we make our tinctures with. All of the cells that we need are in the leaves. They're in the stems. They're in everything. Um, it was just a matter of figuring out the right way of getting them back out with the carriers, it would help. When I got a chance to send a message off to uh, Dr. Raphael in Israel, the one thing that Dr. Raphael said when we had a quick chat is this is by offering the body all of the components in the most gentle, natural way, your body will take what it needs on its own. He said, I would be very arrogant, right, in trying to tell you what variety, amount, or strain might help. But he said, your body does know. One of the greatest things about cannabis itself is the stuff that exists in the plant exists within our body. The body has what's called the endocannabinoid system, and it's a system that includes chemicals and receptors and uh, systems for those chemicals, all related to cannabis. In essence, the endocannabinoid system, or the cannabis that exists in your body, is the master regulator of most of our bodily functions. Most people now with the recreational thing, the minute you hear the word weed, marijuana, whatever, not the words that we use, of course, because we have respect for the herb. It's all about trying to get people to understand how the actual process works with your body and why it's beneficial. 
right? And the 21 amino acids are going to take all 530 components, break it down, take exactly what you need for your unique system, and then the rest leaves. In order for our bodies to function properly, um, we need the proper dietary fuel, right? And we're not getting it, right? And we're constantly under stress all of the time through, well, life, bad air, bad water, bad food. What happens when somebody uses cannabis? It helps them not only like a specific ailment, but it also helps them relax. In return, we'll release hormones that help you decrease your own stress level. It's pretty cool. So our body has the ability to heal itself and if it doesn't, we have the ability to use a plant that exists naturally in the world. That's a pretty cool symbiosis. It's a really awesome synergy between the two things. I spend most of my time now uh, trying to explain to people that the CBD side of this is not enough to do what you need to do. I have no idea how many people the Ripple Ripple has gone to now, but it's probably thousands. They just come. We're working with kids, young adults, adults, seniors, horses, dogs. They're bringing their pets. You want to know something? I bet you I can help you. Come on, come meet some of these people for yourself. You're going to be blown away in a few hours. But when I went last January to get a checkup and uh, to find out that I had cancer, it sort of changed everything for me. And it's... It's pretty hard for somebody to uh, get told that they got cancer and then, you know, you, you just don't know what you're going to, what you're going to do when you sit there and you, uh, you're by yourself for the first time. Well, I know I cried anyways, there's no doubt about it. But of course, they have to do the radiation and chemo. And uh, I don't wish that on anybody. I was more or less dying from the stuff because I was taking up to 18 pills in the morning. 18 pills at night, and you know, it, to me, I was just, I just felt like nothing anymore, right? Because now, even after doing the chemo, I found out my nerves are gone in the bottom of my feet, so it's like I'm walking on pigeon cushions, and there's nothing they can do about it. And I found out that uh, we have local friends that are here to help us, right? That actually we're doing tinctures and oils. So anyways, I got to come here and talk with Rob, and. At that time, I had a colostomy bag on and everything because, of course, they had to disconnect my bowels and everything for a while till they did more chemo and stuff too, right? So at that time, I decided, well, that's it. I'm going to start trying to do my own thing. And that's where I started coming to Rob, and we ended up by getting into the tincture and into the oil. And then after that, of course, the doctors were all behind me too, so they were giving me five, five grams a day prescription-wise so that I could make my own. And uh, I, I, I can honestly say it wasn't until uh, two weeks ago that I was so happy because the doctors turned around and they told me, you're cancer free, right? And I'm like, oh. I've had all kinds of people come in here, hung down, desperate, hurting, right? Have no idea and no hope. And when they walk back out the door, it's a whole different scenario. And that's when their healing journey begins. I suffer complex post-traumatic stress syndrome due to um, a personal incident that happened and I was prescribed many, many, many pharmaceuticals to help me through the time that was very difficult. They had told me that I was forever disabled and that I'm not to expect to heal and that I had to give up my nursing license. I wanted to die. I literally went from searching on the internet, learning about how the Attorney General and the Health Canada was gonna maybe consider that my depression was enough that they could give me some kind of medicine and I could go out. My, my desire was to walk off into the woods and just sit down under the trees and die. And instead, I got introduced to a plant by two freaky hippies that looked like Cheech and Chong, got great big hugs, not ask for a bloody thing, and my life got changed. This is it, you know, it's just this. And you take those two little drops. That's all it takes. And they said that money wasn't their motivator and they never asked me for five cents. And they left me some cannabis leaves and they, like I was flabbergasted. And remember they drove four hours to come to my house Four hours to go home, four hours to come back, and that's a lot of gas, 
And I even offered to give them gas money and they refused to take it. They said this was their gift to me. You hear this story about people come to help, they come riding in to help you on, on the big white horse. Well, here it was a pickup truck with a cap on the back and it said men, that was my white horse that came to, came to my door. And, and I thought, okay, what the hell is going, what's the catch? I'm, Cause I'm not an idiot, right? What's the catch? And they say, you gotta play it forward. I have a patient who is a cancer patient, and this is the Rick Simpson oil infused in can of butter, in capsules, which is her treatment that she is taking instead of chemotherapy. She will be coming on Tuesday to pick up her next dose, which is here, ready in box. And uh, that's what I do. Thing of beauty, absolute beauty. If everybody just took the time to work with one person because that one person works with another person and then all of a sudden before you know it, you've got a whole community all working together with one aim, wellness, health, working together. We're not trying to get you high, we're trying to make you feel better, we're trying to, to it's a whole different way of life without running to the pharmaceutical store and buying pills. This is Jasper, his nickname is Spurt. Um, Jasper is a middle-aged horse who this summer presented with a very suspicious looking eye lesion. The vet came out and took a look at it. She felt that it was cancerous. His owner was quite worried and um, terrified that he would have to proceed with the excision and chemotherapy. We had the plan for the vet to come back December when the snow fell so that she could do the excision and pathology. So we decided that why not try the cannabis salve. Rob gave me a can of butter which was the cannabis mixed with virgin coconut oil and that's what we applied. We put it on his upper eyelid and he wasn't bothered by it. He would even lick my hands afterwards which I thought okay there's something in this that he wants to eat. And about a month after that lesion became black. Yeah actually fell off. So we kept on doing that treatment to him and now there's nothing to excise for the vet um, so he will not have to go through a chemotherapy no one wants an animal or a family member to have to do that cannabis was not the plan initially but it became the solution without us expecting that to happen I mean I thought maybe we'd get some reduction but to have the lesion completely disappear uh, and this particular owner she was over the moon happy and uh, ecstatic, grateful, um, and it didn't cost her anything. This was done as an act of kindness. It has been a labor of love between two men that just, I just wanted to share what I knew was really good and positive. It's just ripple, ripple. What can I say? I was diagnosed with lupus when I was 12, and I didn't really get full-blown lupus until I was, uh, what was it, 45? And it totally destroyed me. And uh, I just thought, well, that's the end of it. I might as well just pack it in now. But my husband kept trying to find something to help me. And lady at the bank, Tammy, she uh, told me about Rob and uh, I thought it was a bunch of baloney. She had a list of 25 things, everything from fibromyalgia, lupus, you name it. I took one look at that and went, oh, geez. And my husband made me come to see Rob. I started taking the tincture and I've been 33 months seizure free. That is just unbelievable in itself, especially the way I used to be. I used with the seizures, I could be making supper and I could have a butcher knife in my hand and all of a sudden I'd have a seizure and I'd slice myself. i have sliced myself on the face, on my arms. Without Rob, I don't know where I'd be. Rob, I don't know, he's a miracle person. Everybody wants a label. I like mine, just Rob, right? Citizen, that's it, just like the rest of us. No worries whatsoever. All right. I'll take care of that. 
Okie doke. I gotta get some more uh, wine gums. Because we gave those three away. Uh, uh, this is just enough to give them a sample. There you go. Just trigger them in there. I carry this stuff around in my kit all the time because as you can see on a moment's notice somebody that's been trying to catch up with me or somebody just happens to need it um, it's nice that's why I call it my dignified access pouch as long as I have it you'll always have dignified access to it okay. so we got jars I got my sample container gotta make sure that I got trim for the show because you wouldn't look you'd look kind of silly without it yep there it is and even power trim. Try and show people both sides of the spectrum when we're doing these glasses. So there's just a natural trim leaf and there's stuff that comes to the power trimmer. And of course it all goes in the men with dignity bag. I, I really do enjoy the classes. I think it's just another strong community service that goes on in this little town. As soon as you start explaining things to them at a level where people don't feel they need a degree to understand, uh, usually the response is, well, that made sense to me. And I said, well, it did to me too, and that's why I proceeded on with it, but I've had an awful lot of help along the way. Uh, I like to tell people if everyone has a seed of knowledge, then now we have what we call our Council of Conscience, and it's like a sunflower. And you'll see that there today. People will share their stories openly about one of the most private things that there is, their health. We've seen so many people here that I never thought would ever come through the door just because of their station right? or their lot in life as it was. But when it comes to their health and it starts failing them and they have an opportunity, trust me, it doesn't matter how much money you have in the bank. Right? It doesn't matter what you believe. Um, your health is all important. It's the one tool that makes all those other things possible. The population of patients that I see, on average, is over 65. They're on the most drugs, they're on the most medications out of everybody, and they're the ones who need the most help right now. And so now that cannabis is starting to take its foothold in medicine, you see a lot more transition from the eight laundry list of eight drugs to the one medicine. And it's a small community. Right. Around here, I mean, it, it doesn't matter. We don't try and hide things. If you have a problem with it, well then talk with that person. Right? You can, if you have addictive personality, it doesn't matter what you choose, right? um, you'll over imbibe and, and there are results. With this, we're trying to be as respectful as we can and allow people to uh, get on with their life and do the things that they are. And now it's time to get on with teaching. <laughs> okay, you gotta go. <laughs> Hello, sweetheart. I gotta get to hi there. Hang on, I'll be getting to hugging in one moment. Where are you? Oh, How's my girl? Sunshine. How you doing? Papa G! I have you made it. Come here. <laughs> yeah, of course I made it, brother. <laughs> Papa, did you get the table? The folder from downstairs? No, did you want it? Yes, please, for okay. setting up the cooking class. I shall class. go and do my duty and stuff. Ladies, welcome. Come on in. Okay. Come for class? Yes. Please. Find yourself a spot. Hi folks, I'm just Rob. I'm not the cannabis guru or Grey Bruce, right? Not every other name or label that you've given me. I love you all and thanks very much for taking the time today because this is to empower you. This is your healing journey. Once I've done what I can do, then it's your choice as to what you do with this information and how you use it. So far, I've seen nothing but a ripple of love go out. Each and every one sharing what we've taught them to benefit their neighbor, their friend, their family member. And this is why you're all here. Because truth of the matter is, I, I'm, my body's running out of energy. I've been doing this for about six years now and I'm just kind of beat, right? But we have all these other people who are gonna help. But once we teach you how to do it yourself, it's very simple, then you're gonna have the ability to take those shackles off and help your neighbors and friends and family. Gary said to me just one time, he said, you know, he says, I'd just like to help all that we can. And I think through this ripple of love and respect, uh, we've been able to emulate what this man's dream started with, right? Um, Sherry is a very qualified lady that looks after most of her folks, and she helps me with all of the research programs that we do. Every day, there are more and more compounds being found now that there's actually money being put towards research. 
So right now there's about 510 different healing elements in, in the cannabis plant, either in the THC part or in the CBD part. That's the beauty of this too. The body knows what it needs. So if you take your tincture, you may only need oh an element from here, two from there, one from there. So your body's going to take what it needs store what it might need and excrete what it doesn't need so you're not getting anything left stuck in your body. I put together that learning package and it's gone viral <laughs> which is good it, so it gives people a basis but it also for those people out there who are still a bit skeptical when they see that and it shouldn't matter but it does they see my qualifications and it sort of changes their perspective. The feeling I have about it is that I want everybody to find out and be educated. They have a choice that way. That's exactly right. And they you're have a, a very good teacher. I understand you. everything you say. I felt that we were kept in the dark for many years. I mean, I, my children, my son grew up thinking that marijuana was really bad for you and all this. You know. And if we only knew it would have changed our lives when I was a lot younger. Well, I think we have to understand the basis and the history of where cannabis in modern time has been demonized. The dried leaves and berries are ground up and made into cigarettes by a simple hand machine. The deadly narcotic is thus quickly and easily prepared for its market. The sale of marijuana is even more difficult to detect and halt than the traffic in drugs such as opium, morphine, and heroin. And more vicious, more deadly, even than these soul-destroying drugs, is the menace of marijuana. In this case, the state waives trial of the defendant, Ralph Wiley. It is convinced that he is hopelessly and incurably insane, a condition caused by the drug marijuana to which he was addicted. It is recommended, Your Honor, that the defendant be placed at an institution for the criminally insane for the rest of his natural life. In the early 1900s, you have a guy that comes around and says, we're going to just call this marijuana. Where does the term marijuana even come from? The idea was that they were trying to stop Mexican migration into the United States of America. They had to figure out how to demonize the people and demonize the medicine that was being used. And that's where the marijuana comes from. Marijuana was supposed to represent a knife, an ancient knife-wielding crazy Mexican. That's where the idea came from. And that's why we don't use the term. It's a very derogatory term. And then went on through the war on drugs and it was no different in Canada. Canada and the United States both started to outlaw cannabis as well, both for economic purposes because synthetics were coming around and because they were trying to demonize and hold a population of people at bay. And so it's very important to destigmatize cannabis because we have to understand its true origins and we have to understand the purpose of why they were demonizing it in the first place, which was politics, economics, and race. If you'd have told me 30 years ago as I was you know, sparking up a joint that we'd have a bunch of old ladies sitting in a public place learning how to make things with cannabis, I would have just laughed at you. We start you gentle, you get a counselor, you'll work with them, they'll bring you up to a program. Once you're good, God love you, go help your friends and neighbors. Tincture is very high in CBDs. If you have one THC cell, one CBD cell, no psychotropic effect whatsoever. This average is with 10% THC and 20% on the canovials. And that is the beautiful part. That's the magic. That's why when he came back from the lab, they screamed, Eureka, we can give this to the kids. They're never going to get high. If we find out that there's a child in need, and if my locker is full, it's empty the next day. That's it. They get it all, OK? My garden every year, I grow four or five plants. It's been deemed the angel's garden because I don't smoke but one bud out of each one of those plants. That's it as a tribute. The rest is made into oil for cancer patients that need it. I'm not making this stuff up, folks. Honestly, it will rectify all these things, autoimmune problems. We deal with Parkinson's, um, post-traumatic stress disorder. Sherry gave you that whole list downstairs. It literally brings the body back to homeostasis. I didn't make the rules, I didn't come up with the recipes, but the truth is most of this stuff used to take three and four moon cycles to do. Okay, so we're talking 90, 120 days. 
Over the years, I've refined it down to 24 hours. That's as fast as we can give it to you in an instant gratification world that we all live in. You've got to change your whole lifestyle. You know, like the foods that we eat and the health, and the, it, it's all combined together. The spiritual wellness that we're talking about here is also part of it. That word scares a lot of people. But for me, that spiritual side is the knowledge. When we've shared this knowledge with you, you're now empowered. Lots of people locally will sit in McGinty's in the coffee shop with this and put it in their coffee. Nobody's having a problem with it. Nobody's microwaving babies or doing all this bullshit we were told about. So you take away the fear, you start reducing the, the stigma, and um, before you know it, you've got cooking classes out at the barn where three quarters of the people there have hair grayer than this beard. It's all free and by donation. If you want to give us some money, if you don't have any money, okay, that's fine. And the people go, oh, well, how do you make any money? Money? We're not making any money. If we were making any money, I'd have some teeth. <laughs> this little ripple, there's more to each one of these than just giving person, here, try some cannabis. Right? It's not grannies hitting bongs. As you can see out there, nobody's smoking. When people say, well, we don't want those kind of people around here. What kind of people? They're your neighbors. Most of the people shaking, hugging hands today. That was what I mean. They all know everybody. Nobody's trying to be disrespectful or painful. They're just trying to get on with um, the life that they've earned. And the ripple, ripple, it just keeps on spreading. The love, compassion, educating, Remember that movie? There was a movie, Pay It Forward, a long time ago. The idea of Ripple Ripple reminds me of that. Um, so, and Gary and Rob are those guys. If we want to reach that civilization that has all the things that we act, that that most of us want, which is peace and and wealth and health, the the way to do that is you have to pay it forward. So while Rob and I were just sitting here reminiscing about teamwork. Everybody puts their own little bit in, what they have to offer. Yeah, it's basically a lot about compassion. We are compassionate. Very, very. It's not about the money. <laughs> it's about people's health. That's what it's all about. Show everybody. I was laughing the other day when we were talking to Steve Vance, and I said, so what are we going to talk about in five years from now when we've taught everybody everything about cannabis? He said, oh, wouldn't that be nice to just kind of work ourselves out of a job. <laughs> I would love to see it that everybody will be able to step off the cliff with the rest of us and have no fear. But I also know that that first step, just that one single step past fear lies freedom. I was so afraid that I was going to get thrown back in the States because of what he was doing. But now I don't care. And it took the love of one little girl is where this all started was with Angelina. Angelina was perfectly healthy until she suffered her first seizure. It's heartbreaking to watch your child um, have a seizure. She said, I, I, just want, I just want my body back, I want my life back. Okay, okay, we're going into a big seizure. Okay, let's lie her down. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Why can't we fix you? Why can't we make it better? So since our, um, our epilepsy journey has started, um, we have been a patient at SickKids. They've now determined that she has something called intractable epilepsy. And no real traditional medicine does really control the seizures. Many of the pills that, uh, that, that she does take do have uh, major side effects. Um, there could be kidney stones. Um, there could be spots on her, on her skin that show up like little lesions. Yeah, from a mother's perspective, it's just like you try everything. You say everything, you try to do everything, and then, you know, you just see your little girl falling apart, and it just breaks your heart. Angelina, um, <laughs> like I said, I call her the little angel, right? Because when Wilson came and told me, it, it, it broke my heart, and he said, you know, she's died in my arms again, and they revived her and brought her back, and he said, I prayed, right, that if this is what it's going to be like to take her. And he said, then we meet you. I got in contact with Gary, which then supplied me with a, a bottle of tincture, and we went seizure-free for about 45 days. She's a better kid because of the medical cannabis. We've taken a lot of medication off and, and substituted it with the oils, and it has helped her. To have someone care about my daughter that much is, is a great feeling. It gives me an assurance that there are good people out there in the world that want to do good. Angelina is really, really adorable and 
beautiful, beautiful girl. It's so difficult to deal with childhood seizures. One of the most heavily studied seizure disorders like Dravet's syndrome, for example, in pediatric population has been studied with CBD now. And it has been found that CBD is actually very beneficial in abating or stopping seizures in very specific pediatric populations, of which Angelina falls into. She's very lucky. Angelina is the first one we started with. I have yet to meet her. <clears throat> As you can see, I get emotional when you bring her up. <clears throat> I love the child, and to think that I made a big difference means a lot to me. A big deal. They wanted me to meet her, and I declined because I said she doesn't need to meet an old man that's going to stand there and can't speak and is only going to get emotional. Angie Colors and Rainbow. We don't got it. Grandma's been a long time. I love you. Oh, Angelina! Oh, right. That is so Thank cool. Thank you, Joe, very much. Thank man, you. oh, man. She's our little angel. Yep, right. she sure is. <laughs>
sharing and caring together, and then it just the ripple ripple that spreads out. It's just been wonderful. Now, Kim, all I want you to do is turn your camera right around and point it at the wall. That's the message. It's our legacy of love. The healing is real. Started with a friend, lending a helping hand. Now the love has spread through all of the land. We are healing, feeling through all our This is about community, not profit or pride. Everyone has the right to heal how they decide. One teach one is how it goes. It's his fault. Yeah, but you started it. <laughs> <laughs> ripple, ripple.